Welcome to the Religiously Offensive Podcast. How's that work out for you? What'd you say? Oh, no, I think I think we look like assorted candy right now. Have we pressed record? Yep, just did. Damn. <laughs> Start out with a good old damn. <laughs> Sorry. Ding, ding. I was going to answer that call. Every time that guy tries to call me, I feel like I'm recording. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, tell him to get on a different cadence. He never answers when I call him, and I oh, never well. answer when he calls me. Yeah, is that hat not agreeing with your headphones? I think we figured it out. <laughs> I, think you got I it. love the buck. Is it a bucket hat? Is that the technical terminology? I believe so. If not, I, I think almost beautiful. I almost inaccurate. wore one. I call them fishing hats. So Gab and the ball cap slash bucket hat boys. <laughs> it's that getting seems, that seems I've like got, a lot. There's lots. I've of got it. like a grease mark in the middle of my hat <laughs> from something. I got a lot of salt. Yeah, I got some sweat. Salt, sweat. That's, work for those lines, baby. That's right. Oh wow, that's. that's Kind of gross, but it shows your work ethic. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys ever have like that hat when you were growing up that was just like mangled, but it was like you you just put in the work mm. in that hat. Mm -hmm. You just had a bond, and it was just it was a, little, now, a little ugly. But like it was now, it was your like kind of ugly. Thirteen hundred hats, and I don't feel like if a hat gets to that. You condition, do have a lot of condition. Hats. I'm like, all right, you are a hat. Guy. One away. of these days, we're gonna. I'm gonna open up that beautiful head of yours, and we're gonna. I almost did yesterday. We're gonna show the people. Well, what's yesterday, because I just, <laughs> I just got a haircut, and yesterday, I was, yesterday I was uh, gonna wear it, and then I was like, you know, uh, yeah, those lights are that really making my head shiny. That fade was clean, bro. Thanks, man. I have I a need, large I need forehead. Some makeup. You know how they do the makeup for like we we're not on makeup level yet. I love but the yet. You know the. <laughs> also, that feels oh like a God. quick. Quick solve. You just need it to. Yeah, I could probably watch YouTube you, for you 20 know, minutes. No, you just need some foundation that matches your skin color. It's a brush. Wow. Hmm. You know, dull it out a little bit. Wow. Stuff that I learned watching my wife and my little <laughs> girls. Resourceful. JJ, I have some absolute juice for you, bro. Did you know that earlier this week? <laughs> okay. You're about to, if you don't know about this, you're about to lose your mind. Earlier this week, for the first time in over 50 years, Congress held its first hearings on UFOs. Oh, well. And we're going to have to Google just, this. They just oh, wow. released a lot of stuff. Yeah, right? no, this was uh, literally recently. less than 48 hours. Oh, dang. They found a door on Mars. A door? A doorway. A door. Like a... Like anything like behind a, the door? A portal? Or just like a door? Like, a do like a, with a doorknob that you open? <laughs> that is from NASA. It's on Mars. No. Can I see? <laughs> that looks. It like was in the congressional hearing. Uh that's that was from yesterday. I would like to see. That's a there is a crazy. legitimate doorway caught on Mars rovers. I would like to see. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it looks uh, like a scene. Cue overlay Wars. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guys have listen, no idea we're talking about. Listen, I may I may flash it up there. Okay. Just looks like. A scene from giving Star me Wars. more editing work, <laughs> bro. Or that is uh, just go to Google. You know what, Justin? Justin, can we just table it? Can we table it until our discussion on aliens and UFOs? I want to have a separate pod on that. I'm saying it's super fresh. It's wow. right up his alley. Wow. I do. Let's let's do that next week, Monday or Tuesday before you're out. There's a doorway on Mars. <laughs> that blows. That does blow my mind. I'm not Actually, a conspiracy theorist. I just found out about this. Not a conspiracy theorist. I wanted to tell you about this so bad this morning. I was like, I'm going to save for the pod. No, no, no. I'm holding it in right now, for sure. It's <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> freaking me out. Uh, but uh, Someone's been to Mars. Yeah. Not us. Come on, Elon. We need to get there and or, understand what this door is. Okay, so Atlantis. Okay, interestingly enough, have you guys del like delved into Atlantis ever? A lot of people think Atlantis is an underwater city. It was never that. Mm -hmm. That's not a thing. Well, it was a city they believe it existed that had like supreme technological advancement right. and things and like that. And so the, the 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 story goes, it was like circles of water and land, but it was always right. an above ground city. Mm -hmm. But just yeah, yeah, advanced technology. Right. 
I, yeah, remember I don't that. know how we ended up Those with like concentric circles. I mean, I've seen like this. Uh, I've I've watched podcasts where people explain like, yeah. oh, like this is probably where it was. And it's well, and even like, whoa, like the uh, most historians believe that the Empire of Atlantis was a culmination of like ten to twelve different, you know, really um, advanced cities like that. Mm. And so one of them, they believe the the younger Dryas theory would say, which is essentially like twelve thousand years ago, where they think it could have overlapped with like what we consider the great flood and especially in like biblical history, but essentially um, they think it's mostly meteor asteroid type impact that, yeah. that really and I'm, sh- shifted the, and I, at this Earth. point it's just kind of crazy Cause I think um, there's a lot of people that would just be, you know, that, that are, don't see the Bible as credible or whatever. And granted, we know it's not literal, right? But a lot of the stories in there, especially about, you know, worldwide catastrophe and all that stuff, like yeah. all that stuff is, I mean, that has grounds. I mean, stuff happened. I mean, if it wasn't described word for word, how it happened, whatever, but yeah. it comes from somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Typically. So, Randall yeah, Carson I mean, does a lot of good uh-huh. on that. Yeah. Cause I've seen him on Rogan. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, no, his, his Graham Hancock, it, I think is another one. They're fascinating for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, I'm totally random. No, no, that's why we're here to talk about things that aren't what the subject of the podcast is. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> some of the, so we uh, transparency here. We recorded this on Friday, um, but we're kind of re-recording some of the content because Gabby wasn't here, and uh, it didn't. Fl- it kind of was ended up kind of weird. So um, we're just re-recording it. Um, so, anyway, today we were going to talk about um, just the devil's influence on everything. Is everything the devil, right? Um, you know, when we look at different things in culture, you know, a lot of times, I, I don't know what it is. I just think as humans, we just tend to want to believe in hidden meanings and different things and, and ill intent, you know, when it comes to logo designs and... Um, you know, movies, TV shows and stories and things like that. Uh, but I think it's just funny cause that, you know, we were all sheltered as kids, um, in some way, right. Typically, um, you know, and unless, you know, so there's some parents, I guess that just don't care. Uh, but you know, I'd say the majority of people are typically your parents try to protect you right from stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm not necessarily, you know, blaming them. I mean, you know, as parents, we're all trying to figure it out. Um, but, you know, there was stuff like, you know, you couldn't watch SpongeBob because Squidward was seen as like feminine. And, you know, he just had these characteristics that like, you know, you just didn't want your kids, you know, it showing. So it was like, all right, we're not going to let them watch that. I never and, like, heard that. I haven't yeah. either. That's interesting. Yeah, no, it's just like that was that was one of the biggest rubs with SpongeBob. And SpongeBob was actually one of those uh, shows that started getting a little edgy as it related to like <laughs> double meanings and innuendos. So. A lot of parents didn't like their kids watching that stuff because kids understand that stuff. I no, exactly. That's that's exactly other. true. Yeah, we don't understand that. But parents, like, I mean, I don't know what it was. I mean, SpongeBob, they don't even have to know. All they could hear is someone at church saying, "Oh, you shouldn't let your kid watch SpongeBob," and then all of a sudden, your parents are like, "Oh, well, they're right. I don't know why they're right. We've never seen it, but we should just let them not not let them watch it." But were you a SpongeBob guy? Oh, big I was. Time. See, that was just after my time. I was like Scooby Doo Transformers. It's I, embedded I just didn't in get... my memory. Like to, I know everything. Yeah, SpongeBob wasn't <laughs> really that. SpongeBob. Wasn't a resident really SpongeBob thing. expert. I, I could go episodes. <laughs> I off rip. I liked uh, Rocco's Modern Life. I watched on Nickelodeon. Oh, I is that like the the guys that. with the hats? Yeah, the uh, the two of them. Yeah, the dingo. I don't know. <laughs> they yeah. older than us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> There's that. like a little gap for sure. His like best you? friend was a as a cow named Heifer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because I <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like stopped. Dog? Oh, I, Gabby. Largely, that was that was after I, my I, time. Cat dog. Cat Rocket. Dog. Rocket power? Rocket power? Oh, Fire. legendary. I, I heard that. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, we, if we're going to go into it, it's I like well, Dragon okay. Ball Z is one of those uh, straight up where, undefeated. Now yeah. it's yeah. now it's like, uh, I love Dragon Ball Z. Is that like sure. a, technically anime? When yeah. I see people post about like it anime, is. I'm just like, I'm not anime, but I'm like, I'm hard on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, so that's Dragon like one Ball of those Z's. things where yeah. not all anime is Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z is anime. <laughs> 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 Whiskey conversation. 
Um, Squares and rectangles, people. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I wasn't allowed watching The Simpsons. You watch, I've heard that. I mean, I, you know, because I. I watched that. I, we I, talked about it. I, I couldn't watch Boy Meets World. Yeah. That's nuts to Well, me. that's, yeah. So, okay. Was that just because of the, the intro song? Was that because of the relationship Fired stuff? It. Disney, yeah, Disney Channel. I mean, at the time, we world? were just we were just so young. I, I just think our parents didn't want us even. Which you know, don't think about girls and kissing. <sighs> Corey and Topanga. I kind of see. On. I kind of oh see gosh. that perspective. You got young kids. They're watching Disney, and then all of a sudden, there's a show about relationships, dating, and kissing other people. You're just like. But what I mean, when you're every, little, what does every Disney movie end up with? Like, right? Like, yeah, it's usually a couple. After. You know, a prince, prince and a princess save, yeah. kissing adults. Adult, well, oh, you're saying you're saying shows of like younger. I'm, kids I'm just trying to put my mind kissing? in in my parents' mind, like why it's like, because obviously there's not like it's evil, but it was one of you these have, things where it's just like they're young, they're innocent. We yeah. like they don't need to be getting like thoughts about like oh that girl right there, she's kind of pretty. Maybe you should put your mouth in her mouth. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Because like a child, like if that's if you sure. don't know what's going on. Here, here's a question: Has anyone ever met someone named Topanga? No. No. Isn't that yeah. weird? She's the only person, even though it's a made up like character. Yeah, I got yeah. older and was super upset they weren't like actually together. In real that, life. That's happened to me a Mr. lot. Mr. Feeny to this day. I mean, <laughs> and then, that, and, then I, and then you get surprised OG. about people who did a movie together and are together in yeah. real life now, or people that sing in a movie that can't really sing. Heartbreaking. Well, Ooh. you know, what was I the could. Bradley Cooper? Well, Lady Gaga movie, but he can sing, he can sing. The Shallows. Yeah, he, he no, yeah, him. I just, I just, yeah, totally unrelated. Yeah, I just like, someone they told me it. that like, High School Musical like that J-Lo. Zac Efron couldn't sing. I believe that. I would believe that also. And yeah. and I, nah, man, Zac Efron's a gangster. I know. I, <laughs> I think he could do shattered it. Shattered me because right. I'm like, wait, <laughs> I didn't even realize that <laughs> was a Zac Efron hater. Did you ever have you seen his new series on Netflix where he basically goes around the world? It's a fantastic. Serious. Incredible. Wait, it why is are fascinating. You a hater? Why are you a hater? Didn't he almost die on one of those? But that's the thing. Uh, why are you It's like his job on that show <laughs> is is still just to be the same tool he's always been, except he's like he's like he's oh, like, wow. he's like wow. meant to be more wow. down wow. unbiased opinion. Yeah, what is? I don't what? know. No, it's just like what did Zac Efron do to you? <laughs> he didn't do anything to me. He didn't do anything to me. No, wow. I mean talk about. Hey, it. it's fine. No, I, I, literally, I have no problem with Zac Efron. Okay. If, it if, sounds like it. Do you ever hear this? shenanigans. Hey, man. I think, I think, dude, it seemed like a cool dude, fun to hang with, whatever. <laughs> He's talking. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, hey. If you're listening. It just, it's, just, it's just weird because they walk around with this dude that's like clearly like kind of more like nature, you know, the, the, the other guy yeah. on that show. You're talking about the series. Yeah, the series. Yeah, yeah. The other guy on that show is just kind of like, you know, he's like the real into it guy. Yeah. Right. And Zac Efron is just kind of like that. He's dabbling. He brings well, the eyeballs. Well, yeah. he's just like, yeah, let me take my shirt off once in a while, and then, you know, I'm still going to kind of be that, like, he's jock. He's got a great physique. Oh, he does. He does. Absolutely does. Man. What I'm saying is, like, I'm just going to kind of play that jock douche role I've always played. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And so I'm like, hey, this is cool. Like, I'm glad I see this side of you where you're interested in this kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's like, he's just playing that same role. He's always, you know what I mean? Man. That's a hot take. That's I don't know. Favorite episode if, you've, also, if you've not like, seen it. It's like, because the other thing I had seen him in recently was uh, Baywatch. Yeah. Okay, well, that's also more, a tool in that one. That's the okay. most. Well, that's, that's the only Baywatch. one that he's a tool well, in. Well, yeah, his uh-huh. role is to be a douche. Yeah, yeah that one's tough. That's that's like, like, you yeah. can't say he's a tool in High School Musical. Hey, listen. Place Beyond the Pines was that? I'm not, I'm was not, that Zach Efron? I'm not talking. I'm not. I, I never really watched any of that stuff. But I'm. Just, I'm not talking about how he is as a real life person. All I'm saying is like kind of the persona he always takes on in these shows. So I'm like, roll my eyes. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, that's fair. If I could explain. Well, because I didn't really do High School Musical. That was also just past my time. Oh, and my then, goodness, uh, dude, Gabby, they need help. Yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, no. They need help. We I'm, grew, I'm, we grew I'm a up. fan. I'm what am I? Ten years How older old than you? Were you guys no, when yeah. it came out. I do. I do. Are really you actually? Like, How old are you? Twenty-seven. I'm thirty-five. Wow. Eight wow. may as well be ten. Things change fast. Yeah. They do and how old are you? Fast. Thirty-two. Okay. You know a show I watched so that, that I wasn't watched allowed the watching The Simpsons, but I was allowed watching Ren and Stimpy. You ever watch that show? No. <laughs> that is like one of the weirdest, We're grossest out. shows. It's so creepy. <laughs> it we is have like creepy. a little overlap, though, because I I recognize some of the shows. But my dad loved it, so I was allowed watching it. <laughs> it's like, what well, is the awesome. name of it? Honestly, like, my dad most of the time when my mom wasn't around, and my <laughs> That's dad hilarious. let me watch it. My dad was known as the guy where we would like put on a movie, and he's like, did it happen in real life? And we were like, well, no, it's a movie. He's like, right, I'm going. 
I'm going to go to bed. It's like, if it didn't actually happen, oh, he, he was just like, I don't care. <laughs> he was just like, okay, interesting perspective. It's like literally all movies. It's but, like as, a, as yeah. humans, we have these I buckets. It. We have these buckets, right? Like all these different things, like sports, realism, adventure. Like, he was a sports guy. He just, every day, all his day. His adventure went, bucket went, 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 went. was just like that That small. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Zero value for that. Hey, you got to respect, I mean, it's, it's I, kind of one of the beautiful things about God creating people and different you know views and interests and things like that it's like we need each other because it's mm -hmm. we're up. not all that you know there's stuff your dad slayed at like dude his For work sure. ethic was like no one else i've seen yeah. there so since he's left the office they've they've uh like hired three full-time people to take over his responsibilities i believe that <laughs> that's For awesome. sure wow. <laughs> he just but it was like it was identity like, it workhorse was just man like, yeah no it's it's funny um I, uh, what's some of the other stuff you can't watch? Um, Harry Potter, mm, right? So, dude. so Harry Potter, Big Lord of the Harry Rings, kind of Lord get of into Rings. like so that, like witchcraft and yeah. And it's know. just crazy. It doesn't even ma like, so even Disney stuff. I mean, I know, um, I, there are still people I know, uh, that are uh, regular parts of my life that would like still like just have reservations and ask questions anytime, like a witch comes up on a Disney movie or something like that. It's mm -hmm. just like, uh, are we promoting magic here? You know, it's just like, all right, let's just okay. Let's let's see. This is this is a f science fiction story. It's like, right. Not even a chance this could happen in real life. Mm. This is like completely just a story of good and evil where good prevails. Like how, <laughs> that sends a good message. All right. And we're sitting here saying that Harry Potter's not okay, but Narnia is okay because C.S. Lewis wrote it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's just like gets back to that. Oh well, we can look past it if it's our if it's a guy that's a, a Christian advocate. You know what it's I mean? Us four no more. Yeah. So me. it's just I, it's so funny because there's not only is there kind of a hypocrisy in that whole thing. It's just like the whole the whole idea that it's bad in the first place is just why you know. Um, and so you know that's that's kind of between that and some other things. Uh, it it kind of goes into this: uh, is Satan behind everything is, is, you know, the different things that, you know, we see is just like, all right, well, uh, that, that is, that is this double meaning and thing. And you're just like, who made this up? Right. Like who started making stuff up about like, so like there's a couple logo examples that are funny. It's like, uh, have you ever heard of Apple? Like, I have heard of Apple. the whole like garden of Eden thing, like where it was like, uh -huh. so a lot of urban myths surrounded the Apple logo, one being the bite mark represents the apple of knowledge from the Garden of Eden. But the logo has equally <laughs> oh simple God. explanation wow. as the company's name. This is like, this is, this well, is, crazy people, it is an is apple like, with a bite taken out of. Yeah, but it's an apple. Fun fact, though, nowhere in the Bible does it say it was an apple. Just Boom fruit. roasted. Boom roasted. Nobody knows. <laughs> wow, okay. So take that to the bank. That blows my mind. Um, <laughs> I never thought we just, that. People just assume it's an apple tree. Could be any fruit. You know what's funny, though? And then, it might not have even, been fruit. I've never even heard apple. Maybe they're just eating, like, avocado seeds. <laughs> you never I will know. say, yeah, so so people take this to the extreme. So yeah. we've talked about a couple times, uh, Gabby, I don't know if you've heard about Olives. this. There's the lady that does this presentation about the monster <laughs> logo. And I don't know if it's like a conference or like some like Christian exhibit thing where, you know, people are like presenting and whatever, but she just, she like has all these things about the examples and like, she's talking about how the M logo could appear to resemble three instances of the letter Vav. So if you separate them out, it's the Hebrew letter six. So it's six, six, six. <laughs> The lady came prepared. She's already this, given me like the slow blink. Like, are you kidding me? This lady goes around and <laughs> continues to do this, or what? I, I bet she yeah, does. She has Absolutely, I'm she gonna does. say she, she, she was so yeah. prepared. You don't just go to one trade show. Oh, dude! Like she you, you got a lineup. Shows. She she was training Whole years probably. Booked. She was training for America's Got Talent for sure. Like she'd go on there and just have this argument, and they'd be like, "Hey, we'll send you to Vegas." But maybe she wouldn't go because <laughs> never mind. Um. So yeah, so then she talks about how the logo, uh, the uh, the banner said like "Unleash the Beast," you know, mm -hmm. which is you know the the beast in the Book of Revelations, and then the 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 letter O of the monster resembles a crucifix, so it has a, a cross in it, right? And they talk, <laughs> oh gosh, this and is then, one of my favorites. And then they talk about uh, how it's an upside down cross when you drink it. 
So when you turn the can upside down, to, <laughs> Gabby just keeps Boom looking at resting. me. Yeah. <laughs> this is our thought as well. Um, but you drink it, it's upside down, and the upside down cross is just has some like antichrist meaning or whatever. And it's like she's like, and then you drink it, and the cross is upside down. And then <laughs> it's like, and then the devil laughs. It's just, <laughs> it's just like... I mean, oh, this Wasn't is Peter this crucified is, on a cross upside down. He was right, which I think. How is did that even get a bad rap? It's an important thing to bring up, right? Because it's he, in his mind. He said, "I'm not worthy of dying the way my Lord died." So, like, yeah. hang me upside down, right? Yeah, and people, a lot what of people don't that? even know that, right? So mm. that he was crucified upside down, and so people just automatically think any. It, it. I mean, what's funny is this: this cross is supposed to represent what Jesus did, but then people start to just hold it as a sacred symbol. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, no, like Jesus was sacred. Right. And then it's like, not the cross that was sacred. It was the fact that it's just a representative, like in a reminder of what he did. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can't touch the symbol of the cross. Like well, there's, there's even a whole beef like within Catholic, like or Catholicism and Christianity where it's like, I remember it was like, you can't wear a cross necklace if Jesus is still on the crucifix, like on the cross, like your cross needs to like have no Jesus on it because he was raised from the dead. I'm like, what? Like he can be on the cross cause he was on the cross. And then the cross can also not have him on there because he was raised from like, it's just like, this is absurd. Just imagine if you, if you came out with any kind of logo design or anything with a sideways cross, no meaning just, Hey, this is just kind of a, it looks cool as a graphic element as part of my logo. You know how many rumors would start about like, oh, he's got a sideways cross. Let me look up, let me, real quick. Let me look up what that means. You know, I mean, it's just people are crazy. Um, and I just take don't take that to the bank. Yeah, hot I just take. I just don't understand it. Um, <laughs> Not so hot. You know what's funny? You, you'll find Cold this. Take. You'll find this hilarious, um, which I was excited to bring up on this podcast. You know Ooh. McDonald's logo. Did you ever hear the golden arches? You know what I'm talking about? You know uh, what I'm going to no, say? but I'm excited. <clears throat> All right. Here we are. I feel like it's very similar to the monster logo. It's not. It has nothing to do with it's an M? evil thing. Yeah, no, it is an M. You're also correct. Also very close in that respect, yeah. <laughs> the M shaped also has a risque hidden meaning, and this is true. You can look this up. True. What do you mean by true? This is, this this is, is actually proven. this is actually part of the what they talked about when they were coming up with this logo. Okay. Um. It represents a pair of breasts, a symbol of nourishment for us mammals. Oh, so they made the M look like boobs, is what you're saying. And you can't unsee it now. Because Can some I M's don't look like boobs. Why, why did they do that on purpose? Because men are just like, yes. I like if the I had to guess. Well, because those, no, are, those, are, those, saggy are, ones. those are boobies. I mean, I, I can't. <laughs> well, and on top of that, the, like the whole McDonald's thing, isn't red and yellow? Aren't those the two first colors that your mind um, or your brain recognizes? I don't know. Uh, that's thought why a lot of makes mustard. you want to like spend money. <laughs> that's that why a lot sense. of, I think it's a, I think it's a, uh, like a psycho um, analytic type thing where um, red and yellow are two of the first colors that your brain identifies. Well, doesn't, and so I think that's why those colors make you hungry. Because Wendy's is, was red and yellow. Mm. Uh, call me crazy, but I just think it's the letter M. Oh, yellow and orange are colors that make people feel hungry. The color red's associated with emotion and passion. Wow, because yeah, they're all associated with something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so, so they could have yeah, made so, a they could have made an M that looked less like boobies, but they they went straight for the boobies. Yeah, I, that's I, what you're saying. But no one, no, no one, no knows one thinks that. that. So like, so yeah. this is so Snopes. You know Snopes, right? Subconscious. Which is a <laughs> Snopes is a secular website that they do all this fact checking stuff, right? Okay. Um, they like, so do McDonald's golden arches symbolize mother's breasts and <laughs> they determined it was true. Why? So uh, specifically a mother? Well, well I mean, it's female. not going to be a father's breast. <laughs> well, it could just be a woman. Unless he's coming out of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, that's a hey. good, that's a good segue. Hey, hey. why, why no are we judgment all zone for all them for corn titties that grew? What? <laughs> hey, some of us, some of us got some corn titties. It is what it is. I don't even agree with that, dude. <laughs> what? I think Justin's a very fit individual. I know. I, know. I, I honestly hated it when he said he had corn titties. Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking like, about? Bro. Justin's a little body image sensitive. Um, Justin, I, I spent my whole 20s being absurdly sensitive about it. So it's like, I mean, you know when you start to look better. You know when you start to fall you're off a stud. the edge. I don't know what you're... I'm just, we're just saying. We're, if anything, we're just... There's here, a little more we're jiggle. We're just here to encourage Not you happy about it. You could be much worse off. Um, That's fair. 
But yeah, so last night Gabby sent a text out. To we're going squad. golfing today, so um, that's why we're all dressed like cherries. Shame him. I'm bad. I'm yeah. bad at reading uh, group texts. Yeah, Gabby. Gabby sets the tone for us as a well, group. Well, I think largely I, I over. Uh, I just messed up, and I was just like, it's probably not that important. Everyone and shows very up important. matching except for Just. We were supposed to be the team Kool Aid, and we ended up team. I don't know, red velvet cake. Well, I, I'm he's gonna the be sugar to our Kool Aid. Yeah, right. I'm gonna. Wow. I, well, was, I was I'll be the, the scapegoat. So everyone's if gonna it, think. If it goes everyone's bad, gonna think you're the man. Like you're the most important. Like we all work for you. Which is fine. I, lo I'm, I'm I love that. that. Yeah, I don't I'm like not. that. Excuse me, sir. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Should we just like, what do you, what carry you, you hold the hole? Wash my balls, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was thinking. Golf I was, balls. I was. Oh, okay. That's oh. not what I was thinking. Uh, no, I was thinking. Would you like a, a five or a six iron, sir? We'll, yeah. we'll, I'll carry we'll take turns being your caddy. I won't ride in the golf cart. Yeah, just, I just <laughs> just because he yeah, asked they were you going to. easy five, without a doubt. Yeah. Easy. No. <laughs> We play a scramble as a unit, and we try and dominate the course. We well, we try to squad. at least get one stroke less than we played last time. Right. Right now, it's and we minus played four. one time. Yeah. <laughs> so we're on our second time. So we got to go five under, go or five it was under. an absolute failure. Yeah. And I got a new driver that I am jacked about. It's got a you sure did. It's a super. It's take Tell me about that shaft stand. on your driver. It's a super stiff shaft. And it's the stiffest it's you can the, get. It is the stiffest you can get. So. I'm real. I'm real excited because when we went to the driving range, I was hitting some bangers, like right off the rip, you and did. they were straight. That's what we need. I just have to concentrate on keeping that arm straight. If I do that, I feel like I can hit it pretty straight. I love that. I think you we'll be good. That. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, Let the club do the work. Yeah. <clears throat> where were we? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it's you know. So, can you imagine if like when we grew up, some of the stuff that we have now was around, like Scarlet Witch, like dang. Yeah. I mean. Who knows? Parents probably I mean, canceled Disney. I've heard a lot of a lot of uh, the feedback I've gotten. I haven't seen it yet, but the new Doctor Strange movie. I also was, haven't seen it. Was pretty dark and gets into a lot of that stuff as well. Oh, really? Uh, a lot of the initial feedback I got, it was just like it's it's pretty dark. They go into kind of some of the you know it's funny though dark arts and whatnot. Mm. But I think that the only the only people that that means something to are people who are religiously sensitive. Like, I mean, they just, no one outside of anything is thinking anything about any of that. All they think of is, oh, this is a cool movie. It tells a cool story. It may as well have dragons in it. No. You know what I mean? It's just so, it's so non-tangible, right? That's what everyone else is thinking. It's a cool story. But no, we like to take this thing that's totally made up, this science fiction thing, and then like start to apply realism to it. So it's question. like how, what, I don't understand. Question to the group. Um. We see throughout the world, it's, it's been a massive part of our evolution as a species, but like in very underdeveloped countries, there's a massive like um, just emphasis on this witchcraft kind of ideal. Uh, Wiccans, like you go look at like Haiti, like so you, you know, we have like people that try to set up shops on the side of the road and they're like, I'm a psychic. <clears throat> whatever mm -hmm. but in like other very underdeveloped countries like it's very popular to have this voodoo type of mind frame yeah. which is so I, I guess my my question is well it's is all, it more of an underdeveloped type thing a primitive culture where they just don't of course it is maybe they're not at a place where we are and what we've seen because it's like it's weird to me that like if i'm a if i'm a witch or if i'm, I'm in the dark arts like i don't want to go to like an underdeveloped country maybe i don't know maybe those people are more susceptible or suggestible i don't know but it's like it's just odd to me that we have literally none of that in america but it's very prevalent in like kind of more primitive cultures mm -hmm. and countries yeah um i mean i can do you have something to say on that Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, <laughs> not, not, not yet, pass. at least. I, I mean, no, it's in, it all has to do with people's access to religious writings. So, if you sent them the Bible and you sent them, like, you know, and they started to, in a language they would understand and they started to read it and understand uh, the story behind it, it's, it's basically like, it's kind of like, I feel like everyone has this internal uh, knowing of, some kind mm -hmm. of creator, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could you could argue that some people say there isn't and they deny that and whatever. It's just okay, but most people, I would say, mm -hmm. have this just inner like fat like it's just so some sense of they're not in control, like and mm -hmm. and they didn't 
they had to have We're come not here from on accident, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and and typically, I feel like that probably comes about just because uh, you think about it. If you're just if you had no nothing and you were just born and you had to try to figure stuff out, you start to realize the things that the qualities that you have, right? Like so naturally, you like to create things. You like to you know go explore and do these things. And you're just like, well, if I do these things, you know, if I create and all this, like, where did that you know, where'd that come from? Like, sure. Oh, you know, there must be something that created me. So, mm-hmm. you know, you look at that. I mean, it, it makes sense. I think that there's a lot of these arts and diff- because people are trying to explain what they're feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, but they have no, they have no context. They don't have any direction. So they just come up with whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think a lot of these, it's just like, they feel like, well, I don't know what this creator is, but we do, we better do whatever we have to do to impress it. You know, and it's a lot, a lot of it's fear based. And I think, okay, so here's interesting. I think you would probably like this thought. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, I guess, as you were talking, I, yeah, what you were saying was kind of just illuminating some things. I think Illuminati. Yeah. Is it down? Is that, was that, did I just, what? Do a bad thing? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, not. Yeah. Look at my arm. <laughs> I got three downward triangles Gabby's here. Like, oh, that's a hard pass. Just in case. Gabby, Gabby, I know, was just like, stop. <laughs> just thinking, just like, what do you know? Um, so interesting concept. Okay, so as I was like thinking about like listening to you with all that, it's like interesting where we we pose this uh, supernatural galactic battle right as like darkness versus light. Mm -hmm. Right. And we, we act like it's like these two opposing forces fighting, Mm -hmm. but in reality, darkness is literally nothing more than the absence of light. Like the moment light comes, there is no more darkness. So like that, I guess can segue kind of into more of the, like the, the, the kind of Satan devil kind of aspect of it, where it's just like, he is very real. And there is this, there are absolutely forces of darkness, whatever you want to call them, whether it's Satan, the devil or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely, there are, like, evil, like, evil, just maybe it's human nature, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. things at play. But when I think about it, it's just like, okay, so is there a possibility that, like, America being birthed out of primarily, like, a Judeo-Christian type of mindset that was, you know, we, we, we don't necessarily want to marry church and state, but we really founded this country based off of biblical kind of morals and teachings, in a sense of like how we crafted and constructed a lot of our, you know, founding documents. And it's, it's interesting because the the devil and the darkness can be so real, but the greater reality is that like darkness is nothing more than the absence of light. Mm-hmm. So the moment that light is shine, like the darkness is gone. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think, which is why, I mean, and, and you could define, light in certain ways, depending on how a culture who's never experienced this would see it. Right. I mean, you could give someone the Quran, like a tribe or something like that, and they'd probably eat it up just the way they would the Bible, because it's just kind of like this explanation, whether it's right or wrong. Right. Is probably what they would, you know, right. And so I, I think it's just one of those, uh, yeah. I mean, like you said, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's not like it's erased, but it kind of is. You well, know, what, what's mean, your question with it? So I, I guess it's ultimately like kind of feeding into you know, today's topic of just like, is Satan behind everything? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I acknowledge that. So you're just saying without, there's, without, there are dark forces at work, whether it's just human nature, whether it's like the desire of, cause I, I could literally also define it as like, like selfishness yeah, is yeah, like sure. a dark type of energy where selflessness Both, yeah. would be more of, you know, so, so are you saying that so it's without Jesus or the Bible or God I'm, is that is darkness the default? Well, I guess what I'm saying is like we focus, like it's, it's good for the conversation, but it's so easy to focus on the darkness and the enemy. And it's like an easy cop out. But I wonder is like, is the solution just, we need to really be convicted that the light is just the answer. And the moment that the light is shined, the darkness can't stay Mm. kind of a thing. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, these people that you talk about temptation and struggle and all these different things, bring it into the light. Yeah. So without when you're saying, when you say, when when people talk about struggling to make the right decisions and this and that, so are you saying that they just don't have enough light in their I think, I mean, is it kind of like, well, I think there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of hiding and there's a lot of, you, you internalize everything. And then the moment it's just, I, so here, I think here's a thought when, when, 
like, let's put it in a Christianity perspective. When you decide, like, okay, Jesus is Lord, right? You're officially, like, biblically speaking, you're officially saved. Your eternity's secure. But that doesn't mean the next day and for the rest of your life you don't get tempted, right? You still face temptation. You still, you know, have lustful feelings. You still, all the things still happen to you. So, so I guess what I'm saying is like, so in those moments, if you have a level of awareness where like, this is not, so what would we call like dark versus light? Like, mm -hmm. like temptation comes or like the dark comes to want to like whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like the aware, the awareness to say, Hey, that's dark. Yeah. All I need to do is shine light on it. Yeah, sure. Being clarity. That would be fantastic. Yeah. So I think it, so that's why to me, it's like, it's more of an internal struggle of like, a becoming aware of, and we talked about this yeah, on a previous podcast really about good. the importance uh, in my life for meditation, where it got a bad rap in a lot of religious circles because mm -hmm. it's tied to a lot of, you know, older, you know, Eastern type of religions. You know, my upbringing was more so um, the secret place or quiet time was mm -hmm. primarily like go read your Bible and cram your brain full of thoughts um, of God thoughts. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this before, but it's like, when I think about it, like a garden, it's like, anyone that's going to plant a new set of crops, like first you have to go through and get the weeds out. Mm -hmm. Like you have to first take inventory, like what's in here. And I, I think that's what we just do a bad job of is just the, the, the self-awareness of this thought, this doesn't serve me. And, and, and many of us have, I've even gotten to the point where it's like, I know it's not serving me and I'm just going to numb that conviction because like, I know it's not serving me in the long term, but it's it's bringing a, a sense of like instant gratification. Like it feels good right now. Yeah, some parts of that's it. Little, yeah, but that's why to me it's like the enemy. The enemy in the darkness is real, but it's also ultimately the inferior. Right. Here's some. Here's something to chew on. Ultimately, the enemy's been defeated. Right. Like that's the right. reality of it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus came and lived and died and resurrected. So if he's defeated, he spends his whole all of his time trying to convince us he's not right. And that's the game, right? Yeah. It's all mental. Like if, if you keep reminding yourself of the works of the cross of the works of what Jesus did, mm -hmm. you will ultimately never fall to that, but he's really good at his job and he keeps, sure. but my, yeah. So he's vigilant. So I mean, yeah. so with the stuff with like the monster logo, we'll go back to that. Sure. To me, it's like, how productive is it to start telling people mm -hmm. that, no. Satan's behind all these things. Right. Because then that goes against what you just said. He's already been defeated. Like, right. Why the heck are we focusing on this? Like, right. it doesn't matter what, like, who thought of what when they came up with this logo. They could have mm -hmm. been, they could have been a Satanist or something. It doesn't matter. Right. It's just, well, like, if it's, if, if monster's the thing that's going to derail you, uh, like, it's like something's going to come you're on your way off the rails like, anyway. It's, it's one of those, it's, but, but in that, in that, in that kind of mindset, like what Luke said, it's just, the, the emphasis has to be on the light, yeah. not on the darkness. For and sure. so it's like, you can be aware that the dark things exist and they're, they're there. Yeah. And they won't go away, but there has to be a greater emphasis on. And that's why it's like the, those verses that talk about taking every thought captive yep. and like you face it up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So it's like there, there, there is a process because the more you do it, the better you get at it. For like, sure we've talked neuroplasticity before. It's like, it's just a habit. Yeah. So if you like, if, if the darkness or those dark thoughts bring an element of satisfaction to your life, because it's like, this is a cop out. Like, I don't have to really be responsible. Mm -hmm. That's a really real thing. The devil, Cause it's like the devil is trying to tempt me, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, man, it's like, you are responsible for what you allow in your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's you. Or what you allow to stay in your mind. Right. Because we can't, you can't control what you think about, right? Like thoughts go in your head and you're like, what the heck is that about? But you are responsible for what you allow to stay, right? So that's-, that's Yeah, I, I heard it said like, you can keep a, you can keep a, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep it from like building a nest type yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Mm, profound. Um, did you wear that shirt on purpose today to talk about this whole darkness and light thing? I sure did. You just refused to wear crimson. I didn't even know the topic. Hey, man. Darkness, light, but light is bigger. And we're all wearing crimson. <laughs> So clearly, the blood of Jesus. white as snow. There's so many Speaks meanings a there. Better word. I love that. Yeah, well he, done. he just did it. All right, Gabby. How, how, how does like all this conversation around dark and light? I know we're getting into some of these like Christian terms and things that maybe not mean anything to you know people who are kind of sitting on the outside of that. 
What? How does that hit you? Is it just confusing? Is it just like sound yeah. sound weird? Okay. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Give us Hard your pass. uncut opinion. Yeah. No, it's just yeah, confusing. Okay. That ain't right. Yeah. So when so when Justin says that darkness is the absence of light, like what is it? What are you even thinking about? You just, I mean, in the frame of just like sh shitty thoughts versus like you know productive thoughts. Yeah. I guess it's like, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I just think sometimes it's, if, if someone listens to this and they don't know, and they don't know about all that stuff, like, how is this going to hit them? It's just like darkness, absence of light. Like they're starting to get into that. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's the thoughts that, Christianese it's the thoughts category. that are going to lead and, and regardless of where they come from, like we, we don't know, like we can't quantify that. Right. Yeah. But the reality is we all have thoughts that are like damaging and destructive, right. Whether it's to us or to the people around us. And a lot of that is really rooted in to me is a priority of being selfish versus versus selfless mm. and so I, I you know however you want to define it like we all have these thoughts that are just like i could do this and it's better for me but it would hurt someone else yeah. or maybe it does hurt me and there's an element of it, it provides an escape i mean i think these are all great thoughts and you know one of the things that i think about uh kind of leads into the next part of this conversation i want to have and that is about like kids like children you know because we yeah. all grew up in yeah. a in a house we were sheltered to some degree you know like we mentioned before mm -hmm. but uh, how do we you know because i mean we're all at that stage where you know we're starting to have kids and stuff uh you know, thinking about it. And then, you know, you look at this or we're around kid, right? So we're, yeah. you know, an aunt and uncle or, you know, we're around kids a lot. It's just like, well, what principles do we try to, you know, instill in children and teach them? Mm -hmm. You know, for us, it was like, all right, it was a big behavior modification thing, right? It was like, all right, you can't do this. It's like, we weren't telling them why. My son asked that a lot. Why? Like, why am I doing this? What do you mean? Why? And, you know. Like in regard to... Well, why do I, why do I have to go to bed? Why do I have to, why can't I be on the iPad forever? You know, why can't, okay. um, why is, why is cussing bad? You know? Okay. Um, and instead of like before I used to think that like that, why question was just disrespect. It's just like, you just don't, you just don't ask me. Yeah. You just do what I tell you. you. Do what I say. I said so. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm realizing like how damaging that can be. Right. Mm. Uh, cause that's what I was told. Right. And that's just, again, it's not like. You know, my parents knew any better. It's just kind of like how most kids are grow up. They're sure. just like, hey, I'm the authority. You listen to me. Right. Um, so what have you learned to do instead? Well, it's just like this whole conversation about darkness and light and just like kind of uh, uh, teaching them, you know, what, how to approach these things and, and the reasons why. Like, I think reasoning is, is huge. I think it's super important mm -hmm. to explain to kids why you're doing what you're doing. Because in that, and that's one of the biggest things I've taken away from just being an adult and a parent and, and, you know, depending, it's just, you know, sometimes like, you know, we don't necessarily always agree on this, me and wife, but, um, you know, for the most part, I just try to, you know, cause, cause some people would say, uh, kids don't deserve an explanation. And it's like, well, you, you have to help them understand why things are important, why they're doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, Hey, you need to go to bed, you know, cause tomorrow, you need energy to, to get through the day and mm -hmm. you can't be like falling asleep. So I know you want to stay up till midnight or, you know, but it's just like, it's just not productive as a human being to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not always happy with that explanation. Right. Well, and I wonder <laughs> too how like, much it's it, necessary. Helps yeah. Him. And the iPad thing, it's just like, Hey, you're acting like a crazy person. And then you blame it on the video games and they're just like, it's not the video games. It's just like, well, the demon in all of our children comes clearly, out. Clearly. I mean, clearly it has a, an effect. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it just depends on like what games, sometimes stuff like that. But you know, usually it's not anything like, it's not the violence. It's not the swearing. It's not the evil things that we could see in video. It's not like that. Those aren't the things that are bad. Usually it's like the inability to just shut it off. Well, it's crazy. It's like they go on YouTube and watch all these people playing video games in the commentary. Yeah, that's a thing now. For well, sure. all these people, all they're doing is just making money playing their bullshit. That's what we're doing. Well, yeah, but what I'm people saying are watching us talk. Sure. But what I'm saying is like these kids are like by themselves, like these people are like by themselves or in a group of like people, with other screens. And they're just it's this like they're talking shit like we're not necessarily doing that for an hour on this podcast right these kids are these people are literally just whether it's like the, whether they're swearing or not yeah. they're talking some major trash mm -hmm. and so then like i get that uh, i get trash talk from my kid you know because he's oh yeah 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 you know? 
<laughs> and that's just, hilarious. I mean, just because the, the, that's like normal conversation yeah. for him. And I've like, told, Come on, noob. I've, I think I've told you guys this, Man. but I knew, I knew Very things were pain. starting to get out of my control when I just hear Lincoln from the other room be like, my guy, <laughs> he's like, come over here and get this. My guy. It's like my guy. This kid's I am your father. This kid's ten years old. Well, no, no, no. He didn't say that to me. I heard him say that to someone uh, on, uh, online uh. on the game. I just overheard. Off. I, I need a little iced tea, bro. My guy. He's like, like playing Xbox and he calls JJ. He's like, my guy. I need another water. Stat. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm. Dude, I'm not your guy. My guy okay? Give me some juice. I'm, I'm uh, your dad. Amazing. So I wonder though too, like. This is a new world we live in where like screens are just taking over. You uh -huh. know, it's like I think about like when I was little, like I just was outside running around all day. Dude, so it's like if I, I have one I, of I these did, things like going to my hip when I was 11. Yeah. Oh, right? man, it's not their fault. But be, it's like you'd be a different Luke. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a dangerous thing. For Dude, sure. when I was, yeah, when I was young, we're just like we're outside playing sports all day, every day. It's right. like like by like night comes, I'm passed out because I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like now. People aren't physically exhausted, so how do we... How do you adjust as a... Because being a parent, to me, is, like, the most important thing on Earth, I mm -hmm. think. Like, it's so valuable. And I think it, how you change the world is how you parent a child, right? So... Well, that, yeah, and that's, that's, that was my whole point with... Um, having, having the conversations about them and not just telling them what to do. Because when you, when you yeah. tell them what to do, you start to lose trust, Yeah, right? right? And they only, the only way they come to you with questions when they're getting older is mm -hmm. to establish that trust. Mm -hmm. Like, and that is so tough. I mean, yeah. um, it, you know, with Lincoln, we had to have the sex talk when he was eight, mm -hmm. yeah. which is which 50 years not ago ideal. probably Absurd. would not be the thing. Right. Well, I mean, let me, let me tell you 20 years ago, wasn't a thing. Sure. So I never got the sex talk. <laughs> right. So, Same time. Yeah. So right. I, most kids don't, I think they learn from, I mean, where'd you guys learn about sex? My friends. I, I had a talk with my mom. Yep, yeah, yeah. Shout out Gabby's me. mom. Yeah, the, she's a pretty cool lady. Justin, Justin Wonderful. and I, Justin and I had this Christian upbringing, and we learned from sex about sex from our friends. Yeah, that's in all the wrong horrible. ways. That's unfortunate. <laughs> it's just, I can't yeah. imagine the. Oh, you know, you know, you know the think. kind of funny things kid kids believe about sex. When when I talked to Lincoln, he had no clue. He did he just, ask you? No clue. No, no, no. How did it? He came home one day and was just laughing. Couldn't stop laughing and doing it. Like he was just doing this. He's like, oh, oh that's right, that's he was right. just laughing. Oh my God. He was just, and he had no idea why it was funny. His friends thought it was hilarious. Probably because one of his friends kind did, did it in front of their parent and their parents started laughing and he's like, oh, this is funny. Yeah, he goes yeah. tell all his friends, hey, this is funny. Dude. Yeah. And it's just like, and then he comes home, does it. I'm like, oh, uh, here I go. Okay. This is like, I was. Okay, I wasn't expecting to have this combo for another four years when you hit puberty, buddy. You, you look at him and you say, my guy, have a seat. We yeah, need my to talk. Guy. Have a seat, <laughs> my, my guy. guy. <laughs> my guy, you're not going to like this. Um, which, I, I honestly, I didn't how mind. Did he how did he respond to it? Uh, yeah, so I didn't mind having the conversation. You know, I mean, you think it's going to be awkward and stuff like that, but honestly, it's just like, the only way you feel awkward talking about anything is if you don't know anything about it. I know sure. plenty about it, right? Sure. I have three kids. Know how it works. So... <laughs> So when I'm talking to him, Expert you know, I'm, level, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there like telling him like A to Z pretty much told him, you know, Hey, here's, you know, for, I kind of knew what the names of the parts were already, mm -hmm. but I was just like, Hey, here's how it works. You know, it ain't the stork bringing you babies. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I told him exactly how it worked. Uh, and by the end I of just it, just imagine JJ just so straight to the point. I know. Like, this is what it is. No sugar coating. <laughs> Lincoln's no. just wide eyed. No, no, no sugar to help the medicine go down. It's just like, <laughs> can I, here it is. Can yeah, I just go play it. video games? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's like pretty much his reaction. I, yeah. I said, uh, I was like, all right. So I, I got done with the talk. He was so grossed out. He was just like, he was just like, Dad, I never want to talk about this again. <laughs> That's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, hey, you know, but but it's that because I had that talk with him, he's not going to get that kind of real conversation. From, you know, I had that real conversation with him first before he had to have it with one of his friends. True, yeah. So I established a benchmark of trust. Not that mm -hmm. I'm always going to do that perfect. I'm sure there's stuff his friends are going to beat me to, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But I've established this relationship with him to where if he has questions or if he's going through a tough time or if he's struggling with temptation or whatever in his life, and, you know, especially as it relates to having sex when you're that young because it's like when we were a kid, it was like we didn't really know if we didn't have that talk. And then all of a sudden it was just like you experiment until it's like, oh, someone's pregnant, and then that changes your whole course of your life. So we what, all what you said is – this has been sticking to me. A lot of people consider it just like 
a one-time conversation, but it's most helpful when it's a lifelong conversation, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. so you set the starting point of that to prepare for, because if you just well, think, that's true. I, I just had a 12 year old, we had the talk and then you never talk to them again. That's probably not effective. Right. right. But if you right. start it then and leave the door open in a trustful way to be like, Hey, you know, they're 16 and they come home and they have, you know what I mean? Like it's a lifelong journey. Sure. With I mean, cause child. parents are so ignorant to what is actually happening at school. Oh, hundred percent. Right? I know my kids swear in school. Yeah. I know he swears all the time and then he just hides it when he comes home. Mm -hmm. Right. There's Cause so we talk much. about, it's not appropriate talk. And it's like, well, I know what you're doing. I was your age and I know what stuff's happening earlier and earlier. Like on the bus, dude, I mean, everyone cursed like sailors. Right. And it's just cause they thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. Like that's really all it comes down to. And it's just like, I mean, whatever. I don't, it's, it's, you know, just teaching your kid. And I told this to Lincoln and I was like, Hey, you can, I mean, I just basically, it's like said like, Hey, you can swear when you're by yourself or if you're experiencing frustration, whatever. Right. I'm not like condoning it. I'm not saying that like you should do this to express frustration, but you're going to do it anyway. So do it in a situation that's appropriate. Mm. You know, if I, if I, if I, if I explain these boundaries to him, it's just like, it's not appropriate to do it around the house, around your sisters, around your mom and I, okay. It's not appropriate to do it at church around those friends and everything like that. It's not even appropriate to do it around friends really. Right. Cause you don't know what, you don't know what their house rules are and everything like that. So it's a very, and I feel like as you, as you grow into an adult, you know, those parameters expand and you can do it in more situations, but I'm trying to just establish some type of, Hey, I'm not just going to tell you to never do this, including when I'm not with you. Cause that's not realistic. So, so right? my question, cause I, I don't have kids and I think about this stuff a lot and it's like, there's a lot in that we are like, of course, like, I don't want my kids to be the ones going to church and teaching all the other kids bad words. No, I know. Like, I don't want to be that. Exactly. I, I would hate that. Exactly. But then there's also the, a, a, a separate element where I think about, and it's like, do I, do I want to essentially train my child to be one way in this environment and one way in this environment? And, I, mean, you and I know to. it's not just cut in stone, but the challenge, like, I, cause that was my, well, yeah, it that, was, yeah. I was, I had, I had my mask that I wore for church. And then I had probably, I would probably say the real me Monday through Saturday. Yeah. And, and, and like, we all talked, we talked about this on the cursing podcast. It's cultural. So there are, before we had all this, right. You would just kind of go around and you would all like, I mean, there, there's a certain way to carry yourself in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And I think with Christians, yes, we are very quick to say you're putting on a mask. Don't put on a mask, be the same everywhere. But I don't think that's, I don't think Jesus was that way. I mean, you know what I mean? Like his disciples were like, so do you think when they're sitting there, you know, I feel having, like Jesus having a, pretty authentic everywhere, but a wedding. Okay. I think he might've been the only person that was though. I think that's the hard part. Yeah, I guess, but, but the thing you're is, holding it's like back doesn't mean you're being authentic, right? Like if you tell them like, you need to, you need to hold back when you're in these certain environments. That's not not being authentic. That's just I get yeah, and I I I hear what you're saying. Knowing the right and time and place. Yeah, that's, and I'm not advocating a, one way or the other. No, it's just it's, those are it's, thoughts it's, it's I a have. Bit of a it's, conundrum. Mm -hmm. I agree because I but G, yeah, yeah, Jesus was pretty consistent in how he acted. But I mean, everyone else in the Bible was not right, and I'm not saying that's necessarily okay, but it's cultural to where it's like, you can't act the same way at a wedding party than you can like during the week at the office. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to be just partying at the, like, I mean, just it, there's times when there's, a, there's, a, there's appropriate conduct for certain situations. I think we all understand that. But even that to me is cultural. It is cultural, but I mean, you have to do what's cultural. If you're too, count, it, but if you're too countercultural, I feel like you're, we're talking about two different things. So like, your behavior in situations like you're obviously going to work at work and socialize in a social event. Mm -hmm. It gets dicey when you're like, a, like you're a totally different personality. Like, like you, Monday through Saturday, you're a liar, a cheater, uh, whatever. I and guess I'm saying more you're like, no, I'm a good boy. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking more False just identities like, is like, that's kind of what I'm saying. It's dicey because right. you don't want to raise your kid in a way where they're like, act like this on Sunday, then Monday you could throw it out of your way yeah, and do so whatever. I guess I'm talking more like, yeah, certain things like obviously never okay to lie, cheat, and steal. Like that's that's I'm obviously never okay. Examples, but yeah, yeah. You're and saying you're I'm saying, saying more so like, do you have like 
is it healthy for you? And, and this is just a genuine question. I would love to see if there's studies done on this. Like, is it healthy to have a vocabulary for this environment and then to have to have a separate vocabulary for this environment? Like, I, I get why we do that. But I think also part of why we love where we work is because like we don't have that environment where it's like, oh, it's got to be super tightened up and buttoned up. And it's like, you can't like say this or that. It's like part of why I, I think I love our environment is, and it's not to say that we, you know, I need to like aim higher and, you know, raise standards. It's that different yeah, I th conversation, I think, but it's like, I think it's, I think part it's, of why I love it is because it's just like, I don't feel this need to like constantly. Cause when, when I'm in the church environment, I'm, I'm constantly like implementing a filter almost yeah. like with social media. And it's like, so we put filters on everything on social media because we want it to appear yeah, what but, it but isn't. It, it's yes, but this is addressed in the Bible. I don't, I don't know exactly where it is, but I think Paul, uh, he talks about, and this is a very simple example, but it just tells you that people did think about it. Right. And it may be more, evident in our culture now because it's just because of the way things are so complicated and then we have so many different subcultures yeah, coming together thing. we have cell phones we have the information like just the free flow of information it's just like we have to do it more right so it feels like we're putting on a mask but i mean paul talks about going to people's houses and honoring their traditions right so he talks about not eating certain foods if they weren't okay you know i'm not going to sit there and be like you know push myself my culture onto other people right so I'm going to do what they feel is appropriate. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you're so, going to someone else's house and eating, the, like you bringing your own food in your pocket. No, no, he's no, saying, no. He's, saying they're doing. he's saying if they have dietary restrictions, he's going to just eat like they do. Yeah. Well, right. But, well, I you guess I'm saying? just, I'm just being devil's advocate, but like in that scenario, it's like, if you're going to their house, like I would assume they're just going to make whatever food they're okay with. And well, we go to food. church. It's not our house. That's what he's saying. That's that, what Paul's saying. Well, right. Yeah. yeah, so yeah what I'm saying is, I think that's common sense. Well, what I'm saying is that, that, that I'm not going to bring my own food. Yeah. But that, that relates exactly to what we're talking about. It's like, I go to someone's office, not my office. You know, I go to the church. It's not my house, you know? So I'm, I'm going, um, bringing, what's acceptable and what's expected in that environment for the people. And it's the, it's the people's church. There's, yeah, there's an church. element of respect for there's sure. There's an element of respect. And so you have to, you have to adhere to that. I feel like that is just what I was, what I was saying is this an example of the Bible where Paul does that. Right. And, and my it's only not point, seen as putting a mask on and, yeah. you know, hiding who you are. I get, my, my only point is I'm not advocating for either side. My, my only thing is like, I would be interested in seeing like, Hey, let's like start recording some information and data about like, what does this do to an individual psychologically or internally when they just have to go places and just wear and put on filters? I mean, my, I mean, sure, my, it's certainly a part of everyone culture. has it's always everyone pain. has this internal, but I check, think it comes with us, right? A, yeah. But if I went to church and I just like, I said like some kind of swear word, I let slip or something in the green room, I'd be like, whatever. I mean, yeah. I, well, so, I mean, okay, people, so that's like, interesting. Cause, Maybe cause there's not, it's not like, I think it's, if there are certain things in your life to where if, you know, people at the church knew you did and you'd be like mortified, mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff you shouldn't be doing. So, yeah. So the, that's what I was going to say. There's probably an element of like, if there is a massive gap between who you, who you truly are and, who you and then who you be. pretend to be yeah, exactly. in certain environments, that's, exactly. that can't be healthy. Yeah. Right. And so maybe the, the idea is, okay, either you've got to do some, some self work and figure out how to mm -hmm. close that gap or mm -hmm. you need to. I just don't think it's healthy to be in environments where there's a massive gap. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. That was me in high school. Like yeah. I, I would be the guy sleeping around, cursing, going to parties. And then I would try my best to not let like my dad know that. Mm -hmm. And so right. when I'm around him, it's like, no, I'm, <laughs> like I'm a good, I'm a good guy. I swear. Yeah. And just going to Tyler's. I'm your yeah, goodest boy. Yeah. I'm the goodest boy. Just that's going to my ever, friends ever and then you sneak out. And that life is exhausting because you're literally living like two different people. Yeah. And then eventually it catches up to you and everything yeah. Yeah. falls apart. So and one so, of the, one of the things I did want to talk about and we're approaching an hour, but uh, it's going to go over cause I wanted to talk about this was um, <laughs> go, continuing on this sheltering the kids conversation. We're talking about raising kids and all this. And I feel like this all relates. Um, but, you know, we talk about, um, uh, so exposure to these things builds trust like that. You know, we talked about, I think on yesterday's episode, we talked about kind of kids exposure to alcohol and drugs and, and certain substances. <laughs> it's better that they be in a safe place, right. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. you know, it builds trust. Um, I think on the, the one that we were re-recording this, but the one story you told, what I think was really interesting 
is what happens when you don't start with that foundation with kids. Uh, remember the party, how you kind of felt oh, acceptance yeah. and you just want yeah. to tell that story. Yeah. 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 So I grew up, um, grew up in the church, never went to a party, um, never smoked anything, drank anything at all. Uh, didn't even experiment at all. And then I was 18 years old. We're at a varsity. To this, to this point, you're just being told not what, what to not do. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah. I just did what I was told. Right. Yeah. You and never like to be clear at that point, have you never been told like what it is, what it can do to you? I didn't know anything about it. I okay. just knew it was just don't touch off limits. Completely just this is we don't do this. It's on the, it's, yeah, it's we on the don't other side of the fence. You can't. Talk yeah, about you're it. a Palmer, yeah. and we don't do this. Gotcha. Absolutely. And and um, my older brother was an absolute saint, and mm -hmm. still to this day, it's just not something that he's interested in. And sure. so it's. I mean, we. That's a whole different subject. Um, but it, an interesting point. But go ahead. Yeah. So it's like also my kind of example. Both of my parents, neither one of them ever smoked or drank ever. And then my older brother didn't. I was kind of the first one in my family that was even. And so now, okay. So it's funny. Is my younger brother actually was the first one to go down that road. But again, he hid that from all of us. Like now, going back on, it's like yeah, I didn't experiment with anything until I was eighteen. And he was like, oh, dude, I was doing that with like my wrestling, but it was when I was like fifteen. I was like, dang. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> but it was again like he even how close me and him were. He, I, that came out later in life. But so, yeah, so I have no reference for the party world, anything like that. Um, we're at a, a high school basketball game, varsity basketball game, and it's wrapping up. I'm with one of my buddies who was like, you know, I really only hung out with like my church friends that also went to my high school. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there was like three of us. Um, it was me, Tyler and Jeremy. We just did everything together. And I'm at the game. And, you know, one of my church friends was just like, hey, there's this this party going on afterwards, like, would you want to go? And I was just like, nah, I'm good. Like, I just don't like, there was just an immediate like anxiety. It's like, I, I it's not me. I don't do it. I, it's not that I don't want to go, but just like, I, I, I just don't even feel comfortable. Like I just, I'm so like mm -hmm. uninvolved in that world. And so basically it, it, it just, it was a conversation where it's like, oh, it's all, it's all good. Like if, you know, if you, if it's not fun, like we can leave right away. You don't have to do anything. Like there'll be no pressure. Like I'll be, I'll, I'll chill with you the whole time, whatever. So eventually I'm like, okay, like, whatever. So we go and, um, we park and, uh, it's not important whose house is, but I can literally like go in a, a time vault and I can, I can, I can experience this like as if it was yesterday. It was a very, like, it was such a real experience that I'll never forget it seared into my memory. And, um, we, we pull up to the house, we walk in and I am like peak anxiety. Cause I'm just like, everything in my world is just like, I felt like in one in, in, in one respect, I was like throwing out everything that I've been taught. I literally felt like I was just like wadding up my whole life and throwing it in the trash. Mm -hmm. I was just like, this is the one place on earth. My parents would just be absolutely mm -hmm. pissed mm -hmm. if they knew I was. Yeah. And so I walk in this door and not knowing anything and, and, and all the people in the party like at this place where all my friends in school, but we just didn't chill outside of school. I played sports with all these guys. Like we just, we were cool. You know, but I never hung out with them because it was kind of, they were just kind of the, and it didn't help that they were also like the, the popular crowd and then the, the party crowd. It would just, I don't know if that's everyone's experience. That was just usually my experience. And so I walk into this party and I'm freaking out and I have no idea what to expect. And I come in the door and I look and there's a big group of kids sitting to my right in this like kind of living room area. And they all look at me and we almost have this moment where it's just like, you could just feel they're just like, no way. Like, yeah. And everyone just loses their minds. It's like, Oh, JP, let's go. Like I was the last person they expected yeah. to like walk in that. You door. didn't know how they'd respond. I had no idea what it was yeah. going to be, but it, it was just a, like one moment of genuine, radical, authentic, just acceptance, completely devoid of any sense of judgment. Mm -hmm. And it was like 18 years of indoctrination in the church literally just flew out the window. And I was just like, these are my people. Let's go. <laughs> like, I was just like, I will do this with you day and night, any day you want. I will try anything. You name it. Like, it was like, there was some like unreal sense of belonging that I never experienced in my yeah. life. And it was, it was, it was intense enough to just, I went from not even being involved in this world to just jumping straight in the deep end. And, and we talked about it before. It's like, what, what would happen if the church could really harness that reality and not in a manipulative way where we just want 
more people on our team. We want a bigger church. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get our mega church. We need our multiple locations. Like what if it was because, because that wasn't their intent, their, their intent. Like when I came in that room, they had no interest in like, we're so glad you you're here. And, and then now it's like, who else is coming? Like, I feel like what we do with church, it's like, oh, oh we're I, glad that you're here, but I like, got, we need like a hundred of you every week. Yeah. But it's like, it was in that moment. It was like, it was, it was just me and it, and, and they were so pumped and I was just like, bro, I'm, I like, I, I'll do it. This sends me, me to hell. Let's go. Like yeah. it's, it it's, was, <laughs> it was, I, all I can say was, it was so deep and real yeah. that it kind of was the springboard that kind of lunged me into that whole you know season of life. Yeah, that definitely, I mean, it tells you the, the power of that. And I, just I mean, today's church is, is rough. And I keep saying, we're going to get to that podcast because it's important. Um, I believe, but it, it's, it, it, churches are almost so big. You can't even experience that type of belonging. I mean, how many, it was maybe, were, maybe eight people. Yeah. But it was close so, pe people that like I like relationship with. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know. So it's just interesting because I, you know, like what you think of this, there are so many big turnoffs about going to church and feeling that judgment. Right. Uh, or, I mean, or the, just that lack of belonging like that lack of feeling of belonging. So well, we do a good job of like making them like we have all the signs. We have people waving at them, but it's just, then we, that's a very we, surface level. We bring them in and yeah. then it's a very cold kind of passive experience where it's like, we have these cold, dark atmospheres. Cause we want you to be comfortable. We don't want, want you feel like kind of, you know, well, and it's, uh, cause it's hard to blame it's, the people. It's rooted it's in good the things. structure of the church is where it is what it's at fault in my opinion. Yeah. Cause it's, I can't, I can't be expected to have close relationships with 2000 people. Sure. Right, so, right. and I mean, it's just, it makes it worse when that stuff's highlighted by the fact like, dude, I have people in the church that I've introduced myself to like eight times and they still don't know my name. I'm, I'm like married to someone on staff, like these people, like yeah. someone like people on staff. And I'm just like, all right, well, it's like, like you know, my first thought is like, well, I find it hard trying to respect your authority when you can't even be relational um, in the most basic sense. But then the <laughs> other part of that is, if you do that to a guest, you know, or somebody who's just, you know, looking for that sense of belonging and, you know, they see you the next week and the next week and the next week and they just can't remember your name. Mm. This is like how much of a sense of belonging do you feel, you know, mm. but it's like you that that you. person, that person, you know, probably may have a bad memory, but then also may just have to like remember hundreds of people's names every week. Mm -hmm. mm. And we've created this problem. So then it's like it, but that doesn't change the way it feels. Right. When it, when the guest comes and they feel like they're not important. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it is, is radical, that sense of belonging, but the, it just shows you the power of that. And I guess the bringing it back to what I was talking about with the kids is that, uh, teaching them how to, how to deal with situations, how to limit their use of different things or, um, act certain ways in certain situations, you know, that is appropriate based on etiquette, not based on being a different person. Sure. Yeah. It's very important because yeah. in, in those kind of situations, then respect, yeah. the, you, they would learn how to make their own decisions and not abuse things. Right. Um, you know, th and that's the hope anyway. Right. Because when we get to adulthood, all of us, we don't no longer have our parents there to be with us every step of the way to tell us right. the rule book. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, and if that's, if that's how you're raised, where they're just telling you stuff that you can and can't do, that's how you're treated. And then when you go off on your own, it's it. Like they never taught you how to make these decisions for yourself. So, well, that goes back to your whole, like, I mean, we're, it's so interesting. Like the Bible calls us to be childlike and what is like synonymous with childlikeness is just like, why, why, yeah. Yeah. why it's like, we just stop at, we just, a lot of people stop yeah, asking I mean, at why, some point you have to, things. you have to wrestle with with things to, we have to, to experience really... yeah so so a lot of people too and and we talked about this friday too which i want to bring up again um since we we didn't use that recording but basically it's um a lot of people they write books they tell you to read books they they tell you to watch movies or hey watch this five minute thing this pastor has on on this mm -hmm. subject so you can learn something it's like okay that's great not all of us, not all of us can about every subject can learn based on someone else's experience. Sometimes we have to go through it ourselves, unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. You would hope that you can create the safe environment for your kids to experience some things to where you know they're going to fail, but they need to do experience that so they don't experience it in a much worse way when they're older and there's 
dire consequences to that. So, you know, and, the, and that just, you know, it, it's one of those, you know, I'm, I'm just saying like, you know, it, it's good to experience this thing for yourself sometimes. And sometimes it's the only way to learn. You know, I, mm-hmm. I just don't, you know, I just, I just people don't it's... learn the same thing. There are people that will just literally take everyone, what everyone else has done and mm-hmm. apply that to their life. Yeah. Not a high percentage of people. Right. Uh, I just you know. think, it, I just think it would be so sad to get to like the end of your life and look back and realize it's like, I didn't live my own life. I lived someone else's life and I just didn't question and wrestle with things. And, but then, you know, who knows if, if doing those things led you to deep fulfillment, like it's not for me to judge. I just know for myself personally, it's like, I would, I would be heartbroken if I got to the end of my life and I was like, I never wrestled this thing out and figured it out for myself and that just a personal conviction. And yeah, I I can't speak to anything beyond that because it's just some people just don't have that. And we talked about examples of, you know, things that Satan could be behind things that he's obviously not. And we're reading that into it, regardless of what it is, we just, we have to be careful uh, and and really, we have to roll back the age people start learning discernment. I mean, we need to teach kids how to do this. They need to be able to think for themselves. And that's kind of, you know, the bigger point is just, it doesn't matter where the temptation or whatever yeah. comes from. Blame it on Satan. Blame it on whatever. It's, it, we, we have to have the ability to do that. And the, the younger that we can teach kids to do that, I guess, w- overall, my thought yeah. is just the, the better. Here's, One. here's my thought. When, so kind of like echoing what y'all have been talking about. There are some people who feel the need to experience it themselves to learn. And then there are other people who don't, who will just learn from others and roll Mm -hmm. with it. And so I think as a parent, the framework could be like, as you are raising a child, you let them know the good and bad, like the why behind the no, right? Mm -hmm. Why this could be bad, why this could what it's going to do to you, like lay out all of the possibilities and not necessarily force them one way or the other. Because I do believe you don't have to experience something to know it's bad, but I also believe the opposite. Like sometimes it's good to experience, like both of those are true. That's like, that's where. And I think once you lay out the, all the whys, once your child gets to a certain age, you let them, whatever they decide, you meet them there with grace. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, and I think that's hard to do, yeah. especially for me when I don't have kids yet. And when my, like, if something happened to my kid when they were 15, they made, right? Like, it's easy for me to say when I'm not in the fire, but I feel like that's a safe template to, to parent with. Well, it's interesting, too. It's just it's just when the, the disagreement, like, I'll give you my situation, the disagreement between us typically comes with... Um, which ones of these things should we allow them to experience? You're talking about between you and your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the eight, yeah. Cause what, when what like should we allow 10, them eight, nine, to, to experience tough. for themselves and what things do we just have to yeah. steer them from right now? Sure. I think that's where, you know, I mean, I'm wrestling with all of it myself, but I think that's where, I mean, we need, I mean, if we need God for nothing more, it's to figure out how to raise our kids. Yeah. Especially in this changing world. And like, it's bananas to think like I was reading this article. I was talking about that, Children don't like, so our, our brain has different brain waves, right? And go from Delta, Mm -hmm. like alpha, beta, like there's all these different kinds of brain waves. Beta is your super high critical thinking, analytical lawyer type of debate kind of brain wave. Delta is like your deep sleep brain wave. When you get into these crazy, like deep REM, that's where you get dream state. Right. And, and what's interesting (laughs) is a lot of people, when you do like totally different topic, but, um, like psychedelics they essentially keep you conscious, but they slow your brain waves down to a Delta state. So it's like, all you're really doing is dreaming awake. You're basically living a dream, right? And that, that's why anything can be real in those states of mind. And now they're finding out that like, until in like the critical thinking type of what you're saying is like discernment, which requires a child to become self-aware and really think about their thoughts that requires that like Delta, or I'm sorry, it requires like the more beta, which is the high frequency brainwave. And they're finding now, like most kids until they're like six, seven years old, primarily are living in a Delta brainwave state. So it's like, we look at little kids and we're just like, why don't you understand this? And it's like, they are literally tripping their nuts off. 
walking around like unless they're, sorry for the terminology, but it's I mean they're girls and that's we don't to have that's harder to say. <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah, they, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. But you know the other thing is too, a lot of people can't remember everything about when they were that age. Sure. I mean, you remember like little things, like well, it goes, major things. So but. it goes back to the idea that we want to try to help children really see things logically, rationally, but it's like they only experience life emotionally mm-hmm. for the first like five, six years of life. Yeah. And so that's why it's like these now we're learning these things. So that needs to kind of find its way into our calculus of like, how do I, how do I interact with this child? Like in wisdom where it's like, they don't have the ability to rationally like critically think about this. And all of this is just pure emotion for them. So it's like when they feel unsafe, they're going to recoil, they're going to hide, and you're going to be less involved in their decision making. Yeah. So it's just, it's just tough. As I, I don't have kids, but these are things I think about. It's just like, and even, this can be a whole different podcast, but it's just like even like discipline and punishment. I personally have a strong conviction that like if I have kids, I am never going to punish them unless I sit in it with them. Yeah. And it's going to be a sacrifice for me as a father, but it's like, I, I want my child to know like, Hey, if we have to do this, I'm going to sit with you through it and we're going to talk with it. And you're not going to do it alone. Cause how, how crazy is it to send a child off in isolation to just think about, it's like, you you need to be there to like, cause it's that child's mind is who knows where it's going to go. I think it's great. I hope that for you, but We'll see I know what it's impossible. When you actually become an. A well, parent. I know it's impossible, but yeah, that's why. Like, yeah. it's. I just think, think about it. like, if I like really my want daughter, just I mean, is living by emotions, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just she draws on everything. You know how many times we've, I've, you know, we punished her, told her no, like, hey, this is why you can't do this. Just, I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. I hate it. I'm sorry. I'm that guy. I'm taking JJ's role. I, I saw you shifting over there a few times. This gallon He's a getting day. Restless. This gallon a day. Luke's 75 hard and yeah. full of water. <laughs> so, no, it's just interesting, but I think he won't be here for this. Um, but it, I, I thought about giving her just uh, those uh, invisible markers. Yeah. So at church, they had they gave them invisible markers. And so you just draw on whatever. You don't see it. And then there's a little black light on the other side. That that's so cool. That was so cool. You just hey, Sullivan just ha- because go him, her, draw her, everywhere. Yeah, in her mind, it's like who knows where she's at, but like she's just like I am just experiencing life. I don't know anything about anything, and then all of a sudden, like I'm just being punished. Yeah, it's like I get it. Like it's and it's maybe it goes back to a deeper thing of like the materialism. Like we have nice things, and then we get pissed when our kids mess up our nice things, and it's like. Why is the thing more important than the kid? Yeah. It goes back to that whole thing. It's like things were created to be, created to be used and people were meant to be loved and we flip it. It's it's tough with kids especially it's tough. Um because not only are you expected to in a perfect world it's perfectly fine to sit here thinking rationally about how we can raise children and things when you're in the moment, when you're tired, when you're sure dealing with your own life and all of a sudden you got to raise this human. It's it's tough. Um so yeah, just with all the parents out there, for sure. Yeah, and I guess not being a parent, uh, my opinion is trash. No, 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 it's um, not trash. I'm not saying that. I guess don't uh, take it that way, Justin. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just think about these things, and I. So my my question then is: in that situation, is it possible to get to a point where, like, when I think about, like, when I sit down and I when I start my day with meditate, like I always heard this. Um, use more so in, in uh, the Christian world that like, if I start my day with Jesus versus in my day with Jesus, I do a lot less like apologizing in the sense that like, well, cause in your end, when I, it's like, well, when it's in, like, for oh, all I, messed things I, did I messed this up, yeah. but it's like, when you start it with him, it's like, give me grace for this day. And it's like, I know things are going to come and you almost yeah, prepare you like grace yourself ahead of time. Yeah. You prepare yourself for, the, the kid that acts sure. or something like that. And then it's like, then when it happens and I know, again, I'm, I've never been in that place, but it just like, I dream about these things. I think about these things and it's like, is there a way to, to go away and settle enough within myself and my ego so that when the things happen, I don't react emotionally. Like yeah. I intentionally choose the way I react in a, in a way that's going to benefit. Like, I guess in this example, like benefit most the child. Mm-hmm. They'll preach. I don't know. I just preach. Just thoughts. You know, I thought of a fun thing to do too, since we were talking about invisible markers. I don't know. I have these thoughts that come in my head, and I feel like I just have to say it in the mic. I don't know why. You just have a beautiful voice. Uh, I just I, I like hearing myself. 
it's less on a recording, but like in the mic and the headphones, it's just like, I love this. Uh, I could just talk all day. Um, if you had invisible markers, no one would even know what you draw anywhere. Uh-huh. And no one's carrying around a black light. Uh-huh. So it's it's, so dumb. Well, no, nah, dude, why not? Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Really there's all kinds of fun things you could draw on the walls, right? I mean, it's just, and all of a sudden, just put a black light on, and it's just like, boom, dicks everywhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, okay. like, I, I like did I not see that. Exactly. Did, he did it. Yeah. It's just, but it's funny. He did it. But it's funny, because I'm not talking about my house. I would go to someone else's What's house. What's that movie? Uh, I wonder who's. Super bad. Was, talk about it. was it super bad at the beginning where he had the problem where he just couldn't stop drawing? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. But it's it's funny because yeah. you don't need to go into it. Yeah, I already dropped yeah. the big D. Isn't it so. the end of the end of the movie where they show like examples of all the different <laughs> during the credits? Oh my gosh. It's like yeah. Oh, like the, the Hangover where they show all the stuff they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just funny because I you go to someone's house and just draw anything. It could be any. It could be something more innocent, <laughs> but a unicorn. This or something is vandalism on a spot like on their wall where there's nothing. <laughs> they'd have no clue until someday, for some reason. You just text him and say, okay. put a hey black man, light put on a black light on that. Have you ever walked, yeah, just be like, have you ever walked through your house with a black light and seen what other creeps have drawn on your walls? That's what JJ, JJ was thinking of that while you were talking. That's how focused he was on what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Only part of while you were talking. I wasn't thinking that the whole time. Shut up so I can share my thoughts. I thought about it and then tabled it. <laughs> and I, I shelved it in my mind. And it came back, so. It did come back. Evidently, it needed to come out. Well. Anyway, we try to be fun on here. This isn't serious. Lighthearted. Well, some of it's serious, kind of. If you guys are listening, just say a quick prayer for us to go five under today. Uh, we yeah. receive that. I'm sure. I'm sure people. I think we got six under in us. That's that's. I think, what a dream. I think most people that listen to this would be just like, I don't give a shit about golf. <laughs> We're <Faith>. very <laughs> big, faith. very below average. It's a big golf. faith kind of day, baby. All right. Let's go. Let's All right. go. Well, this has been fun. This is good. I think we got had a lot of good productive uh, thoughts and ideas come out, right? Two point I felt was more. It's another disclaimer. More better. Disclaimer more that better. we didn't. Uh, we don't have all the answers. We're not claiming to. Um, again, if you want, uh, if there's anything you want us to take a shot at discussing, uh, info at religiouslyoffensive.com. For those of you saying, I went to your website. It's been saying coming soon for the last two weeks. That's probably five of you that have you've been with us for two weeks, but um, basically, uh, <laughs> I should have I should have a website up, some type of website draft or whatever in the next week. So if I say, it, the if I say it in the mic, I'll make myself do Accountability. it. Accountability. When's the merch coming? Uh, the merch will be following the website at some point. Yeah, yes. we still TBD, need TBD. we need tumblers. Yeah, so other ideas Uniform for merch would be good to get tumblers. people's opinions on we too. We need because the hats. red and the big shirts. That thing looks massive on the camera, by the way, because of the it lens. Does. Should I? That not is just a it? monstrous. Dude, you can't just like put it on the side. I just floor. want everyone to know I'm doing 75 hard. <laughs> wow. Yeah, if you're gonna be hard, take it off the, the camera. Insecure. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's like they're just like ask me about my bottle, me. but don't like without asking you to ask me yeah, about you my bottle. You guys want to talk about something? Why do you have a massive? Well, because this came Friday too, so we can talk about it again because no one's heard it. But the the people like Luke also said he was off social. And it's just like <laughs> anyone else hear that? There's the people in? sitting there itching, like shaking their leg. You can tell they're just like, ask me, ask me to post some things <laughs> so I can say that I'm off social. I'm actually off. So I'm actually, you know what? <laughs> oh, and then I didn't get to tell my story about my dad roasting me. I'm just taking a break from social. Yeah. Roasting actually, you about, about fasting. Just trying to. Oh, empty yeah. My... I was trying to be like holier than thou at a conference. And my dad was like, hey, where do you want to go to lunch? And I'm like, dad, I'm fasting. And he was like, you're not supposed to say that out loud. It's just like, oh, my God. In his calm, like in front of all of my peers, bro. Like I was with <laughs> all of my friends, and I was just like, oh. uh, he he was so happy though. At he, that point, like, I was just like, let's just go eat then. But but just like, think about that kind up. of opportunity to parent right there. <laughs> oh, he he's, just, he was so happy, even if he didn't express it, that you just threw him that that. Like, oh, edge a, just a he layup, just, bro. He tossed it. He tossed it to you, and he just <laughs> boom. So it's like, all right, I'm gonna grand slam this. It's like I'm gonna sun this stupid little kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, birth from my loins. Look forward to next episode to be with all. We love Thanks you guys so much for watching. We, we love you long time. What the one?